Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the Flash 805 on um, the finale of Armageddon. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing episode. I can't stop smiling over it. It, is, it, it's make, it made me so happy <laughs> to see this episode and what it came out to be. If you haven't seen the episode, click off now. Go watch the episode. The amazing episode, I might add. Come back and watch this review. If you enjoyed the video, hit up on down below. Subscribe if you're new. And we're going to get right into it. <laughs> um, so, I, I cannot... I legitimately am so happy about this episode. This made me just... There, every scene in this episode was a 10 out of 10. There was not a single piece of writing, there was not a single scene in this entire episode that I was like, oh, this doesn't fit. Not like 804 with the Chester and Allegra stuff. I feel like every scene we had Chester and Allegra on their own, which was like one or two, it fit with the episode. Um, every scene we had with Dark fit. Every scene we've had with Nora fit. Um, every scene with Team Flash fit. Thawne fit. Barry fit. Mia fit. All these scenes fit in this episode, and it was amazing to see it. I figured 805 would be good. I wasn't thinking it would be this good, and that means that that is saying something. <laughs> um, so we're gonna get right into it. Um, the episode started off with Joe being back, and that instantly made it 10 out of 10 for me. I was hoping we see Joe in 804, but you know it didn't happen. But he did come back. Um, and Barry ran over to Joe's house to see him. It picked right up from where, um, we saw Barry on the phone with Joe saying that he's really back and all that. Um, and then Barry ended up telling Joe about the reverse flashpoint about Thawne killing Joe and basically Thawne destroying Barry's life into a billion pieces. Um, and then Dark appeared, which was very confusing because he's supposed to be dead. <laughs> when Barry redid the timeline... It's supposed to go to things where Dark would not be alive, and his daughter Nora um, would be alive and say Dark, like what happened in Legends. Um, but I guess Barry saw the Time Stone, so he gave it to Dark, um, and then Dark left, I'm assuming. They didn't really show him leaving, but they just went to another scene, so I'm assuming he left then. Um, Reverse Flash Thawne appeared at CCPD and attacked several officers. Um... And then it went to Barry telling Team Flash about Armageddon. And then it goes back to Thawne, and he's trying to draw Barry out. He's trying to get Barry's attention um, for at the point in time we don't know, but you can't. We all assume it's not good, <laughs> clearly. Um, Mia appeared and fought Thawne. She did pretty well at the start, but she didn't have, uh, she didn't have nanites. I think, uh, well, I guess if Ray Palmer's alive in the future, who knows now, but. I guess she needs to talk to Ryan Troy about getting a nine night arrow, like Oliver did, <laughs> and like Diggle has. You know that she needs a nine night arrow. If she's gonna be doing speechers now, but um, and then Barry came in, saved Mia, because Don pushed her against the wall and did the phasing hand thing. Went almost went through her, and then Barry saved her. Um, the reason why Thawne wanted Barry to come out was to um. Uh, save him. He wanted to show basically with people around him um, with Thawne's ultimatum of either saving him or letting him die because everyone knows the Flash wouldn't let someone die no matter what they've done. Um, but he wanted witness, witnesses to it because Thawne thought Barry would actually let him die and he wanted to see to not trust him more than they already don't. Although I guess that timeline doesn't exist so if it's another timeline... I just messed up on that, but you know what I mean. You know, he wants Barry to be broken again, so that's kind of why. Um, then we learned that Mia's looking for William. Um, at the end of 809, William was taken. Um, future William was taken. And um, I guess she's still looking for him across the timeline, because it was someone from the timeline. Um... Thawne is disappearing from the timeline, so if, you know, they don't save him, he's dead, like I said earlier. Um, Mia picked up temporal changes that were a part of Thawne. That's what drew her to 2021, that's why she's here in our time. Um, because she was looking for temporal changes like William, she ended up finding Thawne and drew her in. Um, Chester ended up knowing everything about Mia. He knows everything about every single hero in this universe. I, I don't... <laughs> the scenes with Chester and, like, Ray and Mia and any other new hero that we got on this show that Chester hasn't met yet 
it's gonna be funny as hell because it's he's just being a geek about it, and it's funny because we all know. If you can't agree with this, what's wrong with you? We all know that if we actually met these heroes in real life, if they were real, right? Like, if we met Superman, if we met the Flash or the Green Arrow, we would all be geeking out over it. Like, we wouldn't be, like, super cool about it. We would be geeking the hell out. We all know we would be. If, like, so it's funny to see Tressa react that way around these new heroes that he's meeting, like Green Arrow and uh, the Atom. And when he met the Flash, um, back in season six, that happened too. Which is, I think it's funny that they're doing that. Bringing a normality to the show. Acting like we're Chester and we're experiencing like Chester would. Because we would be doing it that way. Um, then we learned that if Thawne dies, it's permanent. Because the timeline change is catching up to him. I'm assuming we're in like the OG timeline. I don't mean timeline before Armageddon or even pre-crisis. I mean the timeline where Thawne died in 123 and he died. He did not come back. I'm assuming it's that timeline. Um, but they can't actually kill him. Like, Bear can't shove a gun to Thawne's head and pull the trigger. Like, Thawne has to die to the timeline. That's the only way it works. Um, Death World can't kill Thawne. No one can kill Thawne. Otherwise, it won't work and Thawne will just be able to come back. Um, like he did in 123 and several times after the fact. Um, Mia wants Thon to die, um, after everything he did, but she knows not as much compared to Barry and Iris, but she knows a lot, clearly, so, because Barry told her about Reverse Flashpoint, um, then Mia told Iris about William and how he got taken, was, it was just a flashback to 809 with, um, the ending scene of 809 with future William being taken. Um, so that's what um, that scene was. Iris told Mia that Oliver, when he was killing people, it ruined his life. Um, because Mia was, he, she's willing to kill people to get William back. Um, and, you know, it, it was a good scene. I, again, every scene in this episode fit. The writing was really good. I, I'm happy they mentioned Oliver a lot in this episode. Um, which is what I was hoping for. We brought Mia, Oliver's daughter, back. You're going to tell me they're not going to mention Oliver? Or even Felicity, which they did mention Felicity. So I'm surprised they even did that. But I'm glad they mentioned Oliver uh, several times throughout the episode. Um, Thon has two hours before he's permanently gone in the episode. Which means they have two hours to decide what they're going to do with Thon. Um... Thawne brings up Kate's past before the particle accelerator went off. When Ronnie was alive and not Firestorm. Like, he was just Ronnie. He was Kate's fiancé or married or whatever. Like, there were then, you know, what Kate was going through and all that. And then Kate mentioned that Ronnie's gone forever. Now, spoiler, we know he's going to be in 811. Whether he's in our timeline or it's going to be another time travel episode, he's going to be in the season. So, <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see that happen. Um, Kate doesn't want to help Thawne. He wants to watch Thawne. She, sorry, she wants to watch Thawne die. Um, and then Thawne threatens Kate that she'll never get anything she wants if he dies. Which is BS, but, you know. <laughs> um, Kate tells Bear that they need to let Thawne die. Barry kind of agrees with it. Um, because after everything Thawne's did, why does he deserve to live? And then Barry starts talking to Thawne about why he made a reverse flashpoint. Thawne said that they meet two centuries from now. That is 200 years. That is 200 years. How the hell is Barry alive in 200 years? Like, because Thawne, I don't know if that was like a bad wording. But two centuries is 200 years. I don't think Barry's going to be alive for another 200 years. <laughs> So, is there another version of the Flash that's Barry? That is really confusing. <laughs> I didn't realize it until I just said it out loud, but two centuries is 200 years where they meet for the first time. So, is Barry, our Barry, just in the future and he meets Thawne, I guess? I'm assuming that's what it is, which is the pretty much the exact opposite from the comics, because in the comics, like... This timeline, Thawne meets Barry, and it goes down this whole road of Thawne becoming the reverse Flash. 
not like, you know, 200 years from now, you're going to meet me as a kid or whatever, and then you're going to piss me off and become the reverse of everything you are. Like, eh, I guess they can make it work. I just want to see it, though. We need to see it. <laughs> we need to see it. I'm glad they mentioned Thawne's origin story again for the second time in the show. Then the first time they mentioned season two. So six seasons now we've gone without an origin story of Thawne, but, you know. Um, but we learned that when Thawne got his speed, he wanted to be the Flash, so he actually got speed. He was going to save people, and he actually ran up to a group of people to save them from something that was going on. And Barry came in all quickie and speedy and saved them all. And Thawne felt humiliated that he didn't save him. And then he started hating Barry. <laughs> Um, and Barry mentions that only a psychopath would do that. You know, hate someone for saving other people when you didn't do it. Yeah, he's a psychopath. Um, if Barry saves Thawne, he will just keep coming up with other ways to kill Barry. Um, Thawne will keep coming up with other ways to kill Barry. So, I can see where Barry's coming from on just letting him die. Not only to save himself, but also everyone else. Because Thawne's killed hundreds of thousands of people. Like, they just... I understand why Barry wants him to die, is what I'm saying. Um, Despero appeared while Barry was trying to come up with a decision to make. And told Barry to let Thawne die. And it kind of made Barry's mind go the other way. To let Thawne, to not let him die. Because um, he didn't really know Despero's plan. He was questioning it. Um, if Despero kills Thawne, like I said earlier, he would just come back. Which is why no one can kill Thawne. Like in 804, um, I actually saw someone talking about this. Why didn't Thawne just kill Barry in 804? Like, he just killed him like that, and he would have been dead. Barry could just come back. I, I mean, even though it wouldn't have been like a whole Thawne situation where Thawne has like several time remnants throughout time and space where he can come back, Barry probably didn't do that. But, I mean, Thawne doesn't know. So, I, I think it's a matter of the fact that, or this B-Force would have say Barry. I mean, come on. But... Something along the lines of if Thawne killed Barry in 804, it would have just ruined everything for Thawne. So that's why it was dragged out for Barry not dying by Thawne's hand instead by the timeline's hand because, you know, it's a timeline. Because it's permanent that way. It won't be permanent if, like, someone goes up to Thawne and just shoots him in the face. Like, he'll still be able to come back. Um, even though Eddie's gone, it'll still happen. Um... Barry mentioned that Thawne can't change, and after that conversation, he knows that. I think we all knew that, honestly. Um, Iris agreed that um, Thawne did it to himself, he caused all this, and that he should die. Barry, Iris, and Kate are all agreeing on this, and they're pushing Chester, Cecile, and Allegra out of the decision, because they're the quote-unquote new kids on the block of Team Flash. Um, so they're just pushing them away because they don't know Thawne. And I get, again, where they're coming from this, but at the same time, letting Thawne die isn't really heroic. <laughs> if you're really thinking about heroes, you don't think about killing, killing people. I'm mean, sure Alvar was a hero, he killed people, but he stopped doing it once he really became a hero. So, I think that's something that really, you know, made him look at this situation as a whole. Um, Joe came in, pissed off as hell at Barry, Iris, and Kate. And then talk to Barry and Iris alone about not letting Thawne die. And if they take away Thawne's speed permanently, Thawne won't die. Barry made a thought about that before the main decision to let him die. So basically like what Jefferson did to Barry, to where if Barry gets his speed taken away, he thought the timeline would change, Jefferson would want to kill him and save everyone to save the whole city. You know, that. It would happen again, but Barry would do it to Thawne, not Jefferson. Barry would do it to Thawne. Um... Despero took matters into his own hands because he saw what um, Barry was thinking about doing and what he was more like going to do. Um, so he decided to mind control Mia and attack Team Flash using her. Um, then we go to Barry talking about the plan to get rid of Thawne. Once Thawne's speed was gone, he would go to Argus. He already called Cisco, which was mentioned. So... It's, it's funny that they can't put him in Star Labs. Like, I get why they're not, because he's broken out of it several times, and they're not watching him 24-7. But 
I mean, I guess Argus can hold him, you know. But, I mean, if he gets out, you know what I mean? It's going to be another whole situation where if it's in Star Labs, they might know about it. You know what I mean? It, it's that whole situation. Um, which we don't entirely know who Thawne was talking to at the end of 804. We don't know that. Nothing was mentioned about it. I just realized that. We we don't have we have no idea who Thawne was talking to at the end of 804. No idea. It wasn't Mia. I thought it was Mia at first, but it wasn't. It wasn't Despero, because that's what wants to kill him. It wasn't anyone on Team Flash, so who the hell was it? <laughs> Probably someone at Argus. I bet Thawne planned it. Probably did that way. Maybe it's blood work. Or maybe it's this whole Red Death thing again. Who the hell knows? Um... Like I said in the video <laughs> uh, last week. Um, Despero appeared in the cortex with Barry. Telling Barry he... Um, that Thawne would just get his speed back again. And then Despero teleports himself and Barry away. Into some random place in the city. Um, and then they start talking. Goes back to Star Labs. Mia has a sonic wave arrow. Like with the canary cry. But in the arrow itself... Um, and attacked, I think it was Allegra and Frost, I'm pretty sure, and knocked them out, or, you know, whatever. Um, and then Despero, Barry figured out that Despero lied about his past. He was never, he was always a villain. Despero was always a villain in this story, but so was Thawne. There was definitely two villains in this story, but Despero was the main one. He lied about his past. He was the one that caused pain. He was the one that caused tragedy on his home planet. He didn't save it. He didn't save anyone. He caused all of it. So Barry figured that out. And it's because of Despero's actions saying that, oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to harm you, harm the city, harm the world to save one, you know, to save this whole planet. I need to destroy it type thing. It's, you know, yeah, Barry realized that's not what a hero does. And that's what that Despero did. Um, so he's lying about it. Then Barry and Despero start fighting, and holy crap, it was an amazing fight scene. Um, Mia shot Kate in the leg, um, and then Barry made several after images of himself, all running towards Despero. Um, and he actually made a lightning, like, force field on his arm to protect him from the lightning. Or not the lightning, the, um, his laser eye shooting lasers at him. I didn't realize it was a lightning at first. I just saw him holding up his arm. And I'm like, I thought his lasers were powerful, but it was a lightning shield that he put up on his arm. So he's using more lightning constructs, which is what we've all been wanting this show to do, and they're pulling it off. Um, which I also want to mention, the CGI, amazing with Despero, and the lightning too. Um, the writing was amazing. The camera work was amazing. Everything in this scene was amazing. Um, just the hints on the best fights we've had in the show. Barry ended up making a bigger force to protect him from a car that Despero picked up and just tried to slam on Barry. <laughs> We've never seen that on this show or any show in the Arrowverse where th that's happening. We We've never seen that. Even on Supergirl and Superman. We've seen him lift cars flying for stuff. We've never seen Barry just be able to hold a car using his speed force. Like, we've never seen him do that. So it was a very good scene, a very amazing fight, and yeah, one of the best fights the show's ever had. Iris and Steel tried to get through to Mia to get her to stand down, um, because that's what's still controlling her. Iris mentioned William would not want Mia to go down the, that road, and she ended up snapping out of it. And then Despero got pissed off and teleported away, or teleported Barry back to Cortex, I mean. Um, then we learned that Despero supposed to make an atomic bomb to kill Thawne. He's willing to destroy the entire city just to kill Thawne. Or to at least wait for the timeline to come in to let him go. At this point in time, there's like five minutes, I think they said, or so. Roughly five minutes. Somewhere around there. I don't think they the exact time, but we can tell by how much time from this point to when Thawne was supposed to die. Roughly five minutes. So, that's why he was doing it then. Um... Chester ended up making the gold boots. I don't remember out of what. I'm pretty sure it was that device that Barry gave Chester. But we finally got the damn gold boots. And he gave him the Barry. It, the gold boots were made to help absorb the energy from the atomic bomb that was underneath the world. The, like, the city. To draw it up from Despero. And then to slam it down on him. To draw his energy away from his home planet. 
which would make him powerless in a way, so that he couldn't destroy the world or the city. So that was the whole point of pretending to go boots, and I love it, and we're still getting it next the next part of the season. So, yeah. It was an amazing run scene there, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to say it again, and I mean it this time. One of the best running scenes this show has ever had. <laughs> Honestly, one of the best. Um, and then I said Barry... Barry lands the energy right on top of Despero. Despero's connection was destroyed to his home planet. And then Despero disappeared. Don't know where he went, but he was like on fire and just flew away in the air. He didn't fly, but he just like disintegrated, I guess. Um, and then Barry runs back to Star Labs like under a millisecond. <laughs> which I, I'm glad he's that fast now. I'm glad it's like, like that. It's not like, run, go to another scene, show 10 people. And like two minutes later, here's Barry. It's like that. It's just right away. Um, so I'm glad they're doing that. Barry drained Thawne's speed the same way like lightning drained uh, Barry's in 803. Um, Thawne now has zero trace of negative speed force in him or any speed force um, in his system. Thawne ended up being even more angrier at Barry because he took away everything Thawne had. Barry took away everything Thawne had. And now he's even more pissed off about it. Um... And then they mentioned that Thawne's at Argus, Despero, they don't know where Despero went, but he, he's just gone right now, and probably for good. Um, Team Flash and Mia end up doing a little party to celebrate the success with Despero and Armageddon being done and Thawne being in prison, hopefully forever, for at least the majority of that time. Um, Dark ended up appearing, and Mia nearly killed him, because she realized what Mia had done to Laurel, she remembered that. Or I guess Oliver told her something. Something along those lines. Mia knows. And, um, you know, the multiverse crap. <laughs> with art. With the new Laurel coming in. That will, I guess we know that's post-crisis. And it's not, you know, different pre-crisis. But, um, or at least, well, possibly. It could be different post-crisis. But she definitely knows pre-crisis timeline stuff. So, you know. Um... And then Mia remembered what Iris told her about killing and not doing what it did to Oliver, so she didn't do it. Um, Dark's daughter's still dead, and Barry feels bad for him, and, you know, talking to Dark, and he felt better about it a little bit, but Barry did help him a lot through that. Mia mentioned that Oliver, or it's not, not Mia, um, Iris mentioned to Mia that Oliver would be proud of her for what she's done this whole time, but finding Mia and doing all that. And Iris mentioned that Bart and Nora would get along with Mia. And Mia had no reaction to it. So I think that means that she doesn't know who Bart and Nora are. Um, which is something. <laughs> um, I was kind of hoping it would be like the new team Flaro on team, you know, whatever. Um, like it could be the new Legion of Superheroes in the future with um, both... Um, Mia, Bart, and Nora, you know, them crossing over every now and then, but, you know, it works. Um, Joe ended up talking to Dark, and he ended up thanking him for helping Barry save the timeline. And then Dark gave Joe the time stone. What he's going to do with that, I don't know. I'm assuming it'll come into place later in the season. Um, but, uh, yeah, then Dark disappeared and sees Nora, and then Nora Dark appears. Dark's gone, he died. The timeline finally came back to normal. It set back in. And Nora knows Barry and Iris. I'm assuming because the Legends told her about them. Or Ray did. I'm assuming Ray did. And um, Joe takes Nora to go tell her what Dark did. What happened to him. Barry made a toast. And then Bart and Nora at the end of the episode for a cliffhanger for 806. We're just coming back in 2022 in March. Um, Bart and Nora appeared in a photo from 2014 at CCPD. And in the photo, Eddie Thawne is visible in that photo, and it's, as is Joe. So, I think it's fair to say we're going to be seeing Eddie in 806, because we already know we are. <laughs> so, this is further confirmation we're going to be seeing him in 806. Um, but, yeah. It's definitely going to be an interesting episode, um, 806. But, 805 was hands down, like, the best episode of this crossover. I know I said that for 802, 803, and probably 804. But 805 felt like a premiere. 805 felt like a premiere level episode, which is just amazing to see that. 
No, you know what? It felt like a premiere and a finale more than the one. It felt like the two levels combined and it just blew up the roof. Like, it, it, it felt like a movie, okay? It felt like a movie every minute of this episode. And it was an amazing episode. The writers are doing an amazing job um, this season. I hope it stays up for 806 and the rest of the season. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll find out. Um, but overall, amazing episode. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys later this week for another Flash video. More than likely coming out either Wednesday night or Thursday night. So I'll see you guys then. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.